Murray, Maz, how you guys doing? Very good. good. You? Hi. Who wants to go first? Thoughts? Murray, go. Who's the uh, who's the horse face XGM they got on the ESPN panel? That, oh, uh, Bob, Bob Myers. Myers. He nailed it at the end of this thing last night because I'm getting in arguments on my usual text chain with my dopey buddies. Oh, tough game. Oh, they got by with their skin and their teeth. Bob Myers said at the end of the game, never in doubt. It was never in doubt. I'm sorry. Like, it was a closer game than game one, but it was never in doubt. The Celtics just have more, more everywhere. That that Mavs team, at least in this series, is beat up Luka in a bunch of bums. It's just that simple. And I saw one stat that proves what their offense has been in this series so far compared to the, their run-up to it. Through the first three rounds, Dallas shot 198 corner threes and 54 lob dunks. That's their offense. It's how they get their role players going. In these two games, they've taken eight corner threes, and they have one lob dunk. That's it. And that's also credit to the perimeter defense by the Celtics and guys like Derek White and Drew Holiday. They're too deep. They're too good. That Dallas team is Luka and a bunch of hacks. That's it. And Kyrie, and I know we'll spend a lot of, a lot of time on him. You go from 12 to 16, not enough bum. He's a bum in this series. Celtics are making them look like a five seed, aren't they? They really are. Yeah, look, and again, the Kyrie part of it, I'm sure we'll get to in depth. But I will tell you that, in my opinion, I am far more impressed with last night's win than I am the game one win. Because the Celtics, the how long have we been saying, can they win when they don't make their threes? What happens then? Can you win another way? I thought Dallas played better last night. And when I say played better, I don't mean played great. I mean that they are clearly outmanned in terms of talent. The Celtics have a, a deeper team, not to be confused with a bench, but a deeper team. They have more options. I thought Dallas did a good job overall of controlling the pace of the game, challenging the Celtics out on the perimeter, forcing the Celtics to try to win a different way last night. And the Celtics missed open shots too, don't get me wrong. But the bottom line is they had to win a different way. And they did. They played defense. They went to the bucket, they shot free throws, and made them, yeah. unlike the Mavericks. And so overall, it, it required something different. My two cents, they would have lost that game a year ago. They wouldn't have won a game where they made only, uh, you know, how many, six three-pointers, and they would no, it was more than that. Well, they were under 26%. From beyond the oh, line. Oh, brutal. But they did keep shooting them. Yes. They shot 39 of them. They did. They kept but, shooting and shooting and shooting them. Okay, but again. So it's not like they really did anything different. No, but they played defense. And granted, Dallas might. But if, you have, if it's a rock fight, then win the rock fight. And I just not, I'm not sure that they would have been able to sustain it at the defensive end a year ago if the shots didn't go in. They would have shut it down and that would have been the end of it. And so, again, uh, for that, I give them credit. And I, I, I'm more impressed that you can win a game at this stage when it doesn't go the way you want it to go. When it's not your game, then what? And they won it anyway. And going back to last year, too, like, so if Marcus Smart's there, you know, Drew Holiday and Derek White last night were making the right shots. If Marcus Smart's still here and that game was going the way it was going and they're not hitting threes, Smart, n in no doubt in my mind, would have been like, well, it's my time to shine. I'm going to show you. I'll bring us back in this game. And then that's how you lose. That's how they would always lose when Marcus Smart in games like this was still on this team. If I had to ask you generically, what's the story of the series? What would you say the story of the series is so far? Kyrie. Dallas's second guy has been a bum, to use Murray's term. Kyrie. Kyrie is a, he sucks. He sucks in this series. The whole point of Dallas being Dallas, like the, the one thing I was waiting to happen last night was if Dallas can keep it close and get to the final three minutes and it's a one-possession game, are the Celtics in trouble because they have Kyrie and they have Doncic and they're better in those key that, that's the whole series. See to me that would be the one B. The one A is the Celtics are just that good. Their superstar player has been at best a sidecar in these first two games. And had they lost, I think would be all over him and rightfully so. And Jason Tatum today. He can play like this in these games, and it kind of doesn't matter. They're just that deep, and they're that good. So that's I think it, it ties in with Kyrie Irving because uh, the Celtics just have way more. They just they have, uh, you know, any given night, it could be four guys, one of four guys, one of five guys, something like that. And that's just, it's not even close. So that the caliber uh, of depth, and as you said, Maz, it doesn't mean bench. It just means a number of top quality options. And so that ties into the fact that the Mavericks do have two, except the second is a complete no-show. 
And it, is is he a complete no show, or have the Celtics put him there? Is it just a bad matchup, or is Kyrie Irving choking? I would say a little bit of both. Like they've done a good job on him; they bodied him up. But Kyrie's also not making shots and making good decisions. So you know, I I mean, I don't want to eliminate what the Celtics have done defensively because I do think, like for example, Holiday stays in front of him and plays defense with his feet and does a good job on it. So like Kyrie's used to getting guys to bite. Holiday doesn't bite. So you're going to have to find a way to beat Holiday without him helping you out. But that said, Kyrie's a shot maker. Make some freaking shots. Make some shots. Like and and when you know when Doncic is not on the floor, the whole point is you have to even when he is on the floor, you've got to give him help. Kyrie's useless so far in this series. Yeah, I think it's definitely column A and column B. It is a little bit of both because there's no doubt in my mind that the crowd, fans, this whole situation, it's in his head. He's tight. He's playing tight. But just in terms of Holiday, White, like the guards, there's a size disadvantage there too. Sometimes, especially when he's in, it's all arms and big bodies in front of him. You can tell he's like, We're, I, like he doesn't really know where the hell to go. So I think it's it's a bit of both. You're playing a one-man show. Truly a one man. It show. really is. I mean, they they like you look at them now and say, "How did they get here?" I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you no, know, I well, that's the first <laughs> yeah. thing I said. It's like the Celtics are really making them look like a five seed, and you do wonder. It's like their centers got talked up. I feel like they're both not ready. I make mean, lively really it needs to learn how to play. Uh, the PJ Washington's their third option. I mean, he had a chance. He had a breakaway. With whatever minute change left to make it a three-point game, and yeah, Derek White and Jalen Brown did a good job getting back. He he sort of I don't know if you really watched the play closely. I mean, PJ Washington just came up short. The rim dislodged the ball more than Derek White did. He just sort of gagged on that opportunity at the end, I and mean, that was his one chance. So they, there's there's just there's just nothing there. And uh, you do wonder how they got here in the first place. And, you know, look, they were playing great, so you've made them look like a, a five seed. I don't want to just say that's in a vacuum. Like, you're, you're making them look that way. But that's the way that they look. So, like, to me, the story is that the Celtics just have way more, and that ties into Kyrie Irving. If Kyrie Irving had showed up and was scoring at his clip, then it, it, it wouldn't look that way. But he's just, he just, he can't get there. He can't get there, and he can't finish when he does get there. And to me, that's that's sort of the story of this, this series so far. And last night was the night. Like, if you want to say in game one, the Celtics were making threes, you know, Porzingis, like, okay, fine. Game one was going to be a tough game for the, the, for the Mavericks to win if you compare the two because of the pace of it. You know, the Celtics were making shots. Like, that was going to be a tough pull. Last night, they were in the game. It was there. If Kyrie makes a couple of plays, the game is there to win. If you're voting for MVP at this uh, moment, what would be your ballot there? Murray, I'll start with you. I think I'd go Jalen Brown, but I could be talked into one or two other players, but Jalen Brown would be my MVP. Okay, right well, now. give me the other two, one or two players. I, I think you, you could either go with Drew Holiday or even Derek White. Okay, so Brown, White, Holiday. Mess. Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Tatum over Brown. Yes. Why? La I thought last night, again, this is going to sound ridiculous. Other than the shots, <laughs> I thought he was terrific. Oh, his passing was awesome. I thought he was terrific. So, again, now, and when I say other than the shots, the three-pointers are one thing. Guys miss threes. It happens, but he's got to do better than he's doing. My bigger issue is at the rim. How many shots did he miss at the rim? Four? I counted four that he's got to make. Okay, if you are the quote unquote best player in the league, you got to finish at the rim. And let's say he doesn't, you know, finish all four. Three of them? Two? 0 for four? So I, I need to see more finish, but I thought the rest of his game was outstanding. I felt that way in game one, too. I thought he was good in game one, and the passing was better last night. Holiday, though, and I felt this way after game one. I said Holiday and Brown in game one. Holiday has been near perfect in this series. I think he has been dynamite. No, no tur turnovers. Thank you. No turnovers in two games. Zippo. Zip. And he's, you know, I don't know what the shooting numbers are. It feels like he's making everything. And that little well, they're all underneath. I know, but, but you know what? He also doesn't, he doesn't do too much. He just gets it, flips it in, you know, or drops it over you if it's Irving. He's not looking to dunk it or bounce it off the glass. No, I'm just going to drop it in the bucket, and then I'm going to go back. And defensively, he's been good. 
Uh, right now, my my MVP is Holiday. Okay, is it a problem that Tatum's not a series? He's not the best player in the series or the best player in the team. Is it a problem? Yeah. No, not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, which I thought, which I, you know, I, I came to that realization towards the end of the year there, that if they relied on Tatum to be the guy, to be the best player on the team or the series, that's when they would get in trouble. And that's not how they're constructed. That's not their strength. And he's not shooting the ball well enough to be that guy right now anyway. I mean, like you say he's not good enough to be that guy overall. I, I, I can't say that. I can say that right now he's, he's not shooting the ball well enough for you to just feed him, feed him, feed him, which he, he probably recognizes, which is why he's become a facilitator, and he's been excellent at it. So if I were a Celtics fan, I'd be thrilled with Tatum's performance. I really would be. But I also wouldn't sit here and say he's the best player on the floor, but that's okay. Uh, is it okay? How do you feel about that out there? Uh, finally, quickly, Porzingis, where are you? Coming up limp there at the end of the game? I mean, in a vacuum, do I think he's healthy? No. So I... Uh, do I think it should cost them the series? No. So, you know, but am I worried about him individually? Yes. Do I think they should win the series without him? Yes. They absolutely could win without him. 100%, especially now. That 2-0 with all that runway? Exactly. I mean, I felt that way. It's 0-0. Never mind 2-0. If you like that clip, check out more videos from Felger and Maz here. For more Celtics analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.